for being with us today. Um, you can see on your screen, uh, you have reached the University of California Executive Education informational webinar on the upcoming program, Technology, Technology Leadership. Uh, throughout the course of this next hour together, uh, we're going to be covering two key areas here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about what this program contains, what's the curriculum, uh, what will you be learning, and we're also going to cover how that curriculum is delivered. So how will you be learning? What is that experience like? Uh, so you're going to gain insight into both of these levers here today as we make our way through our learning uh, shoulder to shoulder here. Uh, you all are the stars of the show as you're investing in your education, you're investing in a, a chance to learn more. Uh, so with that, I warmly invite into the spotlight uh, Richard, Fre Richard Freistadt, who's here to tell us all about Berkeley University of California. Richard, thanks for being here with us today. I'm going to hand over that spotlight to you now. Thank you, Marie, and hello and welcome to everybody here to learn more about uh, Berkeley Executive Education's Technology Leadership Program. As Marie said, my name is Richard Freistadt. I serve as Vice President of Curriculum with Berkeley Executive Education, and I've had the good pleasure to work with our faculty as they have developed, designed, and implemented this program itself. And it's my pleasure to be here with you today to give you um, a little bit of a, of a trip through Berkeley, through Haas School of Business, through Berkeley Executive Education, and then through the program itself in much greater detail. And we're joined by the lead faculty member for the program as well. So we're gonna get a chance to talk with and hear from Professor Samir Srivastava. So with that, let's go to the next slide, please. So let me tell you just a little bit about UC Berkeley. I wanna give you some context for where this program really sits. Um, in the larger Berkeley ecosystem, it starts with the university itself. U UC Berkeley was founded back in 1868, so a little over about 150, 254 years ago. Um, we are obviously located in the San Francisco Bay Area, which puts us in unique proximity to what we all know around the world as the Silicon Valley Bay Area Innovation Ecosystem. And that really is in the DNA of the campus overall. And you'll see it run its way through everything we do, particularly in this program itself. If you don't know, UC Berkeley is the flagship institution of the 10 UC research universities, which means we were the very first established. And every year, more than 40,000 students find their ways through the Berkeley halls and gates or virtual classrooms in some way. So part of a huge and wonderful, vibrant community. Let's go to the next slide. Sitting within UC Berkeley is our Berkeley Haas School of Business, which was actually founded 30 years after the university itself by a woman named Cora Jane Flood, who was a philanthropist and um, trustee for the university at the time. And she had the foresight and wisdom to say, we should start a college of commerce. And with her philanthropic efforts, she endowed the first four faculty positions, which later became the Berkeley Haas School of B B Business itself. And so that makes us the second oldest business school in North America. Berkeley Haas is unique amongst its peer schools in that we have six degree programs, undergraduate, uh, four different master's degree, and a PhD program as well. And we also have executive education, which is obviously what you're here to learn a little bit more about today. And we're always proud to say that all of our programs are ranked among the top 10 public universities in the world. Let's go to the next slide. So now Berkeley Executive Education, as it sits within Berkeley Haas and sits within the UC campus itself, really our mission is twofold. It is to create a positive impact on business and society through extending the critical work of our faculty. So programs like these, taking the work, incredible research and teaching expertise of our faculty and putting it out into the broader global mar market is exactly what we are supposed to do to help you and your organizations transform the way business is done. Let's go to the next slide. So let me talk to you a little bit more just about Berkeley Executive Education before we go into some of the details of the Technology Leadership Program itself. First of all, just to give you a sense of the range of offerings of what we do. Um, we have both online, in-person, and hybrid programs that we run. Um, some of our fully online programs in addition to the Tech Leadership Program, which you're gonna learn more about today are things like leading complex projects, um, blockchain, data science, so really a lot of things in the more kind of technical skills and leadership acumen space. 
but we also group everything we do within our open enrollment and custom program portfolios. And so while we do um, open enrollment programs like this, that's for individuals looking to sort of upskill, reskill, take their careers to the next level itself. And we group all of our programs in our open enrollment portfolio around four distinct pillars, leadership and communication, entrepreneurship and innovation, strategy and management, and finance and business acumen. And this program obviously will cut across at least two or three of those pillars itself. And we'll talk more about that through the explanation today. Let's go to the next slide. One of the things we always want to point out when you are beginning to engage with Berkeley Executive Education is that we offer what's called a Certificate of Business Excellence. And essentially what this is, is a mark of distinction for you that if you decide to commit to take a minimum of 17 days equivalent of programming with us across a roughly three to four year span, and you complete one program in each of the four pillars listed here on the screen that I just mentioned before, you earn what we call a certificate of business excellence. It comes with it a um, series of different sort of select alumni benefits. And as I said, it becomes a mark of distinction for you on your resume, on your CV, on your LinkedIn account, whatever it may be. And it also gets you even more tightly woven into the Berkeley Haas executive community. Let's go to the next slide. And one thing I should mention as we go to the next slide is this program, the technology leadership program itself is equivalent to four days towards that certificate of business excellence. But one of the distinguishing features of Berkeley Haas and why I always like to point this out is that oftentimes when we talk about our programs with prospective participants, they will ask us, you know, these general topics can be found in different places from different universities. What makes the Berkeley view on this better? And what we always like to say is it's not that it's a better or worse kind of measurement, it's a different point of view. And Berkeley brings a very distinctive point of view to any topic that we talk about, particularly when it comes to technology leadership. It's partly because of where we are, but it's partly because of what we call our defining leadership principles. And these really characterize everything we do here at Berkeley Haas. And it starts with questioning the status quo. How do you innovate by doing what's different, doing what's new and not just doing what was? How do you do that in going beyond yourself and being a steward of your enterprise? There, there's a purpose behind this, right? And how do you do that by exhibiting confidence without attitude? How do you lead in a way that builds trust and fosters collaboration and partnerships? And the fact that you're here to learn more about this program means that you already embody that fourth defining leadership principle of student always. There's always more to learn, you can always grow, and that's what this is all about. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so let's start getting into the technology leadership program itself. And so for two slides, I'm going to quickly um, introduce you to the incredible cadre of faculty that have contributed and that you will engage with mostly asynchronously through the program itself. These are the minds behind the experience itself. And so first, and you're gonna hear more today from Professor Samir Srivastava, who is a faculty member in our management of organizations group here at Berkeley Haas. He is a culture guru, a leadership guru, internationally known. And I'll say a little bit more about Samir in a moment when, when I hand it over to him. But let me introduce some of the other faculty here. And as we, I talked just a moment ago about point of view, I wanna emphasize some of the aspects of these faculty to give you a sense of the very intentional but different point of views you will get going through this program. So let's start with Peter Abiel, who's actually a professor in the College of Engineering with a dual appointment with us in Berkeley Haas. Peter is internationally renowned as an AI expert. So when it comes to the sort of technical aspects of AI, the implementation of AI and how businesses can leverage AI in a very sort of engineering to business translation way, literally there's no one better than Peter to do that and you will engage with him in the program around that. Then there's Professor Zolt Katona, who's actually a faculty member in our marketing group here at Haas. He's the chair of that group as well. In addition to that, Jolt is the faculty director of one of our research centers, the Fisher Center on Business Analytics. So Jolt really marries AI, business analytics, and data to digital transformation around customer insights to drive innovation within sort of product, service, or customer-centric portfolios within an organization. So how do you innovate 
your customer centricity. And that gets coupled very well with Tom Lee. Tom Lee is an adjunct research scientist here at Berkeley Haas, incredible industry background. Um, and Tom actually works with Jolt as the co-director of that Fisher Center for Business Analytics. Tom actually comes from our operations and IT management group here at Haas. So he's bringing a very operations view to digital transformation and technology itself. And that gets then coupled in with somebody like Matthew Stepka, who actually has a dual appointment here with us in Berkeley Haas School of Business and the School of Law. Um, Matthew is a scholar in an executive in re residence, which means he is also a practitioner extraordinaire, which means he's launched businesses, he runs businesses, and he really has been leveraging AI in some incredible ways to drive business growth and innovation. Let's go to the next slide. There's two more faculty I wanna introduce you to before handing it over to Professor Srivastava. So in the last few modules of the program, we really get into some specific applications of some of these technologies, particularly within the financial technology sector or FinTech. And so you're gonna interact and engage with two faculty there. The first, Professor Christine Parlor, who is in the finance and accounting groups here at Berkeley Haas. And she is a FinTech expert in every way, has been teaching and researching it for years. You'll also get a chance to learn from Professor Konchichki, who is also a faculty member in our finance and accounting gr groups here at Haas, and is also somebody who has led financial reporting initiatives and really has gone deep into fintech and financial te technologies and business innovation. And so you're going to get a chance to learn from both of them as well. So let's go to the next slide. So I've given you a kind of broad sense of the different faculty that have contributed to the program itself. There is one faculty who serves as faculty director of the pro program, Professor Samir Srivastava, who I mentioned before. And this is the one faculty member where you will have an opportunity to have live interactions. And before I hand it over to Samir, let me just say a couple things and probably embarrass him a little bit, but I wanna point out this. Samir brings such a unique lens and view and expertise to this program, and that, I think, is what makes it so unique. Because Samir is coming from the leadership lens of things, when we talk about topics like digital transformation, we often say it's about leading people, data, and technology. The people part comes first for a reason, because if you're going to be successful with any of these technology efforts, it's not just about tech strategy, it's about tech leadership. That leadership acumen is critical. And Samir comes to us with business and consulting and corporate expertise. He's a world-renowned researcher and one of the best teachers that I have ever seen. So bringing those three pieces together is very unique. So with that, Samir, let me hand it over to you. Why don't you do a little bit more introduction of yourself and then a little overview of the pro pro program before handing it back to me. Great. Thank you so much, Richard. And that was a very generous introduction. I appreciate it. Um, so let me say a little bit more about my background. I really come at this topic from two different vantage points. So in a prior life, before I became an academic, as Richard mentioned, I was a partner at a global management consulting firm, a firm called Monitor Group, which is now part of Deloitte. And I was one of the leaders of the organizational strategy practice. So a lot of the work I did for about a 15 year period was helping to create organizational alignment with firms new strategies, often their technology strategies. And so I come at it partly from the perspective of a, a practitioner who has uh, helped a lot of organizations think about organizational alignment. But then uh, the second chapter of my career was going back to do a PhD and doing research uh, and being a professor here at Berkeley. And in that uh, vein, a lot of the perspective I bring is that of an academic researcher thinking about these topics. Um, so my own research, for example, focuses on how organizations can take digital trace data, for example, emails or Slack communications, all of the data that are now increasingly available about organizations and people, and then take the tools of machine learning and computational linguistics um, and uh, AI and apply those tools to the organization itself. So for example, what are some new ways that we can think about measuring the culture of an organization as it manifests in how people are communicating with each other. And so rather than doing things like pulse surveys uh, or 
periodic culture assessments through survey platforms, we can get real-time data about the culture and how it's shifting through the use of such tools. And so uh, those are the two perspectives I bring. The third perspective, of course, is the teaching perspective. And that comes uh, a lot based on the course I uh, teach uh, here at Berkeley Haas in the MBA program, which is called Power and Politics in Organizations. And the core idea of that course is that leaders who want to bring about change, including technological change, need to develop political acumen. They need to understand uh, that those change efforts they're trying to lead are inherently political processes. And politics need not be a dirty word. Um, that's that effective leaders learn to embrace uh, politics, but in ways that are not about just advancing their own interests or getting ahead, in ways that are actually good for the organization as a whole. And so that's the lens that, uh, that comes into a lot of the work I do uh, in this program. So with that, let me turn it back over. Uh, actually, let me go to the next slide and say a little bit more about uh, the course overview. So the, the basic idea of the course is, uh, as I've already started to say, that those of you who are aspiring to lead uh, digital transformation um, or uh, bring about technological change need to have not only great technical skills, and this course will of course expose you to a lot of the tools and frameworks that you need uh, for the content of the change process you're leading, but also the people and organizational side of things. Um, and so that's really the, 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 the course in a nutshell is trying to bring that together and then think about how that might inform things like new business models and how we can harness AI, robotics, other new and emerging technologies for impact. You can go to the next slide. So um, some of the, the kind of big ideas from the course are, um, first of all, to help you identify the strategies and processes that you need to lead technological change uh, in your organizations, uh, but how you can take AI, uh, new, new tools coming out of AI and apply them uh, into AI related modeling, how you can evaluate um, FinTech. So we use FinTech as a, as a way to help you really see the application of some of these tools. There's a very concrete um, sector in which we can begin to see how this applies. And the other advantage is it helps us uh, by thinking about FinTech, we can think much more systematically about value and value creation and new business models. Um, but we also want to get really practical. So part of this would be, would be about helping you develop your own pitch deck that's customized to your own organization about how you yourself can lead uh, the implementation of technological change. Uh, and then finally, we'll turn the lens onto you yourself as a leader. So what can we help you understand better about your own leadership style, your own communication style, so that you can be more effective in bringing about that change? Next slide, please. So this program is really meant to be for a broad range of people, uh, certainly senior managers, including directors and C-suite leaders uh, who are trying to lead this effort would be great candidates for such a program, but also functional heads, business leaders who uh, are responsible for driving technological innovation and strategy. Um, those of you who are looking to step up, so mid and senior level executives who are eager to uh, ascend into a, load, a leadership role where you can drive those changes yourself. This is a great training ground. And even those uh, who, like me, used to be in more of an advisory capacity, consultants who need to get up to speed so that they can better support their clients. Uh, these are all uh, candidates, uh, really good candidates for a program like this. Next slide, please. So um, the course uh, really has these four pillars. And I'm going to turn it back over to Richard to talk about uh, the details of the course. Great. Thank you, Samir. Yes. So as we talk about the course itself, it's really built around the four pillars you see on the screen here um, and really how they're woven together through the experience itself. So let me just take a moment to give you a sense of what each of these pillars really means before we look at sort of the program module by module. We talk about developing tech leadership acumen. That's really what Professor Srivastava was just talking about. And that's what his element of the program really focuses on. So it's really about helping you gain that maximum traction on your technology initiatives. So in that pillar, what you'll see us talk about is there's going to be six 
live leadership development sessions across the six month journey of the program itself, where you'll explore how to influence without formal authority, communicate effectively as a leader, drive cultural change and expand your lead lead leadership style as well. And so we're gonna talk more about those as we get into the curriculum. When we think about using data as an asset as pillar two, this is really about exploring how data can drive effective decision-making for you and your firm. So in this kind of block of the program, you're gonna be thinking about case studies from industries such as advertising, retail, and healthcare. And you're gonna dive deeper into data by covering the three main categories of analytics. So you're gonna look at descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics. In addition to that, as we get to enabling digital transformation, in this pillar of the program, you're really gonna be thinking about digital technologies and how they have and can create more opportunities for organizing complex markets and market opportunities themselves. So you're gonna learn about various applications of digital strategies successfully adopted by some global brands. You're gonna contemplate which strategies might prove most effective in your organization. And you're gonna ultimately through this pillar, understand the impact of digital transformation on business models and study some of the disruptive products that transformed the banking and financial sectors as we get to the FinTech part of the program itself. Finally, as we think about the pillar of transforming business with AI, you can imagine well how these all fit together as part of the large bucket of tech leadership. This is where we're really gonna take a deep dive into looking at the various applications of AI in business, the opportunities being created by advances in AI and understanding what AI is capable of and identify possibilities of implementing AI-driven solutions in your business. So you're going to explore pres uh, opportunities pre presented by things like computer vision, natural language processing, robotics, and reinforcement learning as well. So the idea here is that while it is a technology program, it's about the leadership mindset. So it's not about going deep and you're not going to be doing coding or writing algorithms. It's not, that's not what this program is. This program is for you to lead your organizational initiatives that will leverage these technologies. So for you, it's really about here, how do I understand the technologies enough to then translate it to the business opportunities and applications to drive decision-making and strategy setting within my firm? Let's go to the next slide and let's start taking a deep dive. All right, so here in, in the bulk of the session now, we're gonna go through the modules of the programs themselves and show you how this is all woven to together. And we're going to have Samir then talk about that leadership live session overlay and give us a real sense of how that plays across as the thread through the entire six month experience. So module one and this first kind of block of the program is really about enabling digital transformation. So module one, we're going to do an overview. And as I talk about this, these modules are in a very particular order because the faculty who are experts in this space really think about digital transformation not as just a bunch of different parts, but as a process. So it starts with the overview. Let's go to the next slide. After you get that overview of digital transformation, the first part of that process is identifying opportunities for action. So obviously, as it says here, in this module, you're going to do a deep dive to look at how data can drive effective decision making. You're going to look at case studies from advertising, retail, healthcare, um, and you're going to start looking at examples of te techniques like A-B testing, network analysis, and more to begin to really think about how do I identify the opportunities to start leveraging data towards those business goals themselves. Let's go to the next slide. Because as you come off of the identifying opportunities for action, that getting that framework, getting that model, you then really need to look at data and how data can be leveraged as an asset to drive those opportunities themselves. And so this is where we start getting into analytics, the descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics and how to use those to harness data, to look at your data integration, to look at your data sourcing architecture storage within your firm in a way to say that not all data is equal and you need to make sure you have the right data to answer the right questions to make the right decisions at the end of the day. Let's go to the next slide. So at, around this point in the asynchronous experience of the modules themselves will be your first live leadership session. So Samir, why don't you come and tell us a little bit about this one in particular? Yeah, so this uh, live session really focuses on the reality that when you're leading technological change, you're often having to influence other people over whom you don't have formal authority. You can't just tell them what to do. 
And so to examine these dynamics, we will have you read uh, a case study of a leader who was in a different context trying to influence a colleague and was really struggling. And we'll do some role playing uh, where you get a chance to practice, for example, different strategies. And then we'll introduce a framework for thinking about um, how to build effective interpersonal alliances, particularly with people who are peers or maybe in different parts of the organization. Again, people, you can't just tell them what to do, but over time, you start to think about building a, a network of allies in the organization. And we'll talk about some principles for doing that. That's perfect. Samir just spoke to is the experience of the live sessions themselves, which you'll hear as a recurring theme as he talks about them, that there is a very explicit rationale for these being live in this way, because it's not just coming to listen to a lecture live, because that could be done asynchronously. It's about, as he talked about, the simulation, the role playing, and those live experiences that you will have an opportunity to do with colleagues that actually will illustrate the learning, cement the learning, and give you the translatable skills to start taking it back and implement it. So I just wanted to point that out for everyone. Let's go to the next slide, because we're still in this process of digital enabling digital transformation and that means next coming to the process of innovation so as we've thought about identifying opportunities using data now what's the process now how do we actionalize or action orient all of these things so this is where we look at the root causes of problems in your current processes through the integration of quantitative and qualitative methodologies. So this is where we're gonna start envisioning digitally enabled transformation and identify the metrics for such for the success. So this is all about, in a way, sort of how do you manage the process or project of digital transformation itself, ensuring that it's driving towards innovation. And oftentimes what happens in here are some really interesting discussions of a, a word that starts with failure. Um, so this for a lot of individuals, leaders and organizations is the part where you start to question that um, long term held notion of failure as a bad thing and start to see it that if you do the process of innovation right, failure becomes a learning opportunity and actually what's going to reveal the innovative solution at the end of the day if you're rigorous about the process itself. Let's go to the next slide. As we move from the process, this is where we start to really look at what can we leverage in that process itself? So we start to look at digital platforms and networks specifically and start to really dig into the te technologies that have created more opportunities for organizing complex markets themselves. So this is looking at the impact of digital tra transformation on different kinds of business models themselves. How does this change what we do and how we do it? Where we think about revenue generation and where we think about the bottom line and where we think about things like value creation for our clients and customers. So you're really gonna look at digital projects, di digital products against platforms and multi-sided markets as well. Let's go to the next slide. And it becomes natural at this point to look a little bit more broadly at the organization's role in digital strategy. So in a sense, you, you're seeing in this first part of enabling digital transformation, kind of starting broad, getting a little more focused and then coming back out again. Because really here, as it says, the right organizational structure is instrumental in the success of your digital transformation efforts. I think we all have seen examples of where the idea was great. It was the structure and the execution that made it fail ultimately at the end of the day. So you're gonna learn here how to assess the organizational design choices that you and your company make that can affect the capacity for digital transformation. How do we set ourselves up for success and to leverage this strategy in the most productive way possible? Let's go to the next slide. And here again is where Samir will come back in and start talking about principles of persuasion for leaders. So Samir, why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, sure. So um, this is another important part of the leadership journey, which is how to frame your message in ways that are going to be persuasive for, for people. So we'll talk about six different principles of persuasion. So these are techniques that uh, when you make the same message and, and frame it following on these principles, it tends to make that message more persuasive for others. So we'll walk through what those principles are. But then we'll, again, uh, consistent with what Richard was saying before, give you a chance to practice. So there's an exercise where you take the principles, you apply them, you get a chance to enact them, and then you get feedback from myself and from your peers in the program 
on how well you are enacting them, what else you can do differently as a, again, a way to help you internalize the learning. Back to you, Richard. Fantastic, fantastic. Let's go to the next slide. One thing I wanna point out here as we keep going through this, and you heard me mention this phrase at the top of the webinar itself, the fact that this is a technology leadership program, that title is so important because tech strategy is one thing. Then when you layer the leadership on top, that's really the end point of the program. So as you hear me talk through some of these more sort of technical modules, really understanding and appreciating the leadership overlay itself and the value that brings to taking all of this technical strategy acumen and then being able to apply it in the most robust way possible. And so that's where here in the course of the cur curriculum, we kind of start to close out the part on enabling digital tr transformation by looking at some of the more kind of concrete things that you just need to know. Data usage regulations and privacy concerns is one really good example of that. And so this is where oftentimes people wanna be talking about things of what are new governmental policies? What does GDPR mean for this? I mean, really understanding what, they, what the landscape is about data, privacy, and where the opportunities are and where the cautionary areas need to be, and of course, as it says here on the slide, the ethical issues surrounding the use of personal data and how to navigate data regulations themselves. So let's go to the next slide. So at this point in the program around module eight, you're about a third, maybe a little bit more of that way through the program itself. And this is where it, it begins to sort of make a shift. It begins to make a shift from kind of purely looking at enabling digital transformation to really start to weave in more of an explicit focus on kind of AI as a tool for business strategy, business innovation as part of digital transformation itself. And so here in module eight, we begin to sort of bridge that space as we look at future of digital technologies th themselves. And so here we're going to be looking at recent trends in technologies, what opportunities the future might bring itself. Um, and you're going to start at this point to summarize your learnings from those first seven modules, those first couple leadership live sessions, and begin to now really intentionally think about what do I want to do for my capstone? What do I want to see as an opportunity within my firm that I want to pitch back and implement and make happen at the end of the day? So let's go to the next slide. And as I said, right now, we're going to really lean into artificial intelligence. And so module nine looks specifically at exploring AI in digital transformation itself. And so like I said, this isn't about the sort of, you know, uber technical details of artificial intelligence. It's about a more strategy level perspective and understanding about how AI as a unique technology can drive digital transformation efforts. And so you're going to look at various applications in business, the opportunities created by advances in AI, and you're going to understand what it's capable of and what it's not capable of, and really looking at identifying possibilities of implementing it in your own business. So again, starting to really bring it back to your business and what you're going to be working on for the capstone project itself. Let's go to the next slide. And so here around in this point in the, pro 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 in the program itself, Samir will come back in and talk to us about effective leadership communication. Samir. Great. Thank you, Richard. So this is going to go a little bit deeper now into you as a leader and how you communicate with others. So whereas the previous live session, number two, was focused on persuasion principles, that's about framing of the message. Here we're going to realize and, and, and demonstrate that leadership communication happens not just at the level of what you say, that is your content of your message, but also how you say it and the body language through which you communicate your ideas. And so we're gonna introduce you to a framework that helps you think about leadership communication in this more holistic way, thinking about all three layers of communication. And once again, we'll give you a chance to practice dialing up or dialing down different leadership styles that you might need in a given situation. When I say leadership style, what I mean about, what I'm thinking about are things like how assertive you are in a given situation or how open you might be to others. Um, how trustworthy you come across. And as we'll talk about, depending on the situation you're in, you might need to emphasize one or more of those styles. Effective leaders have a really broad repertoire of styles that they can deploy um, as the situation requires. 
And effective leaders have really good alignment between the message and the uh, parts about how they say it and the body language. All three layers are really well aligned. So we'll give you a chance again to practice applying this framework using some hands-on exercises. Back to you, Richard. Fantastic. Let's go to, go to the next slide. So coming out of that leadership live session, we continue in the AI application vein. So I think we're on module 10 now, and now we're starting to look at AI implementation itself. And so the, this is where you're going to, and I want to emphasize the key words here because we talk about this is a leadership program. So you're not going to be getting overly technical here. There will be technical pieces, but here's where the module is focused on giving you a basic understanding of things like neural networks, deep learning as part of those implementation techniques themselves. And again, back to the application for you and your firm, it's about you learning to evaluate the business factors involved in the implementation of these techniques in the data acquisition, training objectives, and performance assessment components that are critical to successful AI implementation. Let's go to the next slide. So as we move now, we're now more than halfway through the program itself. We're at module 11. And as we talked about, this is where we start to get into some of the very specific AI techniques, the AI te technologies underpinning it, computer vision, natural language processing, get an entire module of the program. Because really here, we're looking at how autom automation of complex tasks through these applications like autonomous driving, chatbots, and others are really presenting challenges and opportunities from the technologies. And so it's ab about understanding them and unpacking them to really identify what's the opportunity, what are the challenges I need to keep in mind as I might plan to execute something in this vein. Let's go to the next slide. So here, again, looking at some specific sort of applications or techniques within AI. So module 12 is a focus on robotics and reinforcement learning specifically. So you're gonna understand the nuances of RL, practice considerations for it to succeed. So similar to the last module, it's really about um, looking at the opportunities and the challenges of these specific AI technologies and techniques and about creating value at the end of the day. Let's go to the next slide. And here about is where Samir will come back in with the fourth leadership live session focused on expanding one's repertoire of leadership styles. Samir. Yeah, thank you, Richard. So this uh, session will just build on the one we talked about uh, in, in session three. And here we'll uh, take two very distinct uh, approaches to leadership. Uh, one that's really about, if you will, tough love, you know, helping uh, to provide some correction to people, helping to help people improve from where they already are. And the other is one that's much more focused on enabling leadership, um, being much more uh, open to different approaches people might have and being more nurturing and encouraging. Um, and we'll talk about how both of these, again, can be quite useful. And again, effective leaders have the capacity to, to shift back and forth. So we'll do yet another hands-on exercise where you'll get a chance to practice this, get some feedback from me, get some feedback from your peers, uh, and to really reflect on which of these approaches tends to be most natural for you and uh, what makes it harder for you to broaden your range and what are some ways to overcome that? Um, so that's the focus of session number four. And now back to you, Richard. Great, let's go, go to the next slide. Perfect, so as we get to module 13, uh, we're starting to get to the close of the focus on AI specifically. And so here we're starting to get to the implementation of AI for your business. So here again, as a leader, we're thinking about formulating strategy for AI, the implementation in your organization. And you're going to get a chance to, I think, enjoy looking at some failed AI implementations. It's, oftentimes, there's no better way to learn than to look at something that didn't work and unpack that. And you're going to assess the value of AI-driven applications. And in that module, the faculty will present to you a four C's framework that will guide that assessment of the AI applications themselves. Let's go to the next slide. And as we move to module 14, this is now looking at leading an AI-driven transformation in your organization. So almost in a way coupled with what Samir is doing across the live sessions, here is where you're going to be looking at people and organizations and the role they play in implementing your AI strategy itself. 
And in fact, what is always so interesting for us about these topics in this program itself is how critical the people part, how critical the organizational part is to the success of any digital transformation or AI strategy implementation. And so you really see it being a cornerstone of the point of view we bring to this. And I'll talk more about that later on in the webinar itself too. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so as we start to close out the AI portion of the focus, obviously it makes sense to look at upcoming trends and considerations. So you're gonna be looking, thinking about the moral, the ethical concerns, and these are very real around AI, intelligent machines, the algorithmic decision-making, things like that. And you're gonna look a little bit at what the future of AI might look like. Human machine touch points, augmented intelligence, and think about those kinds of things. And so again, here, it's really, a focus on not predicting here's what AI is going to be, but what are the trends that we see that a business leader needs to be thinking about in terms of harnessing opportunities and driving innovation? Let's go to the next slide. So at this point, again, as we get to the close of the program itself for the last kind of quarter, Samir will come back in for a session on leading cultural change. Samir. Yeah, so the idea of this... Uh live session is to have you now not just think about your individual leadership and influence style, but thinking about how you can lead larger scale organizational and cultural change. And we do this using um, another exercise. This is now a computer-based simulation where you're put into the role of a leader in an organization who's trying to launch a new initiative and is trying to get the rest of the organization on board. And there are some people who are more enthusiastic, others who are um, more resistors of your idea, um, some who are more influenceable, perhaps in the middle. You have a range of influence tactics that you can use, and uh, the change process is going to unfold over time. And so what the simulation is really designed to help you do is to think about what are the levers that you should pull at different phases of the change process? What are some ways that you can get those resistors to come on board? And what are some ways, again, you can harness the power of social networks, the people who are connected to whom, to help you think about a sequencing strategy of trying to influence people uh, in ways that will maximize the chances of you getting alignment in your organization. So you do the computer-based simulation, then you come back and you debrief it uh, collectively as a way to cement, again, the learnings from that simulation. So cool, excellent. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so here we pivot in the last few modules of the program, there are 20 overall, and we start looking at this more kind of concrete specific application of sort of everything you've learned up to this point within the financial technology sector and fintech specifically. Um, whether you are an intrapreneur or whether you are an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. FinTech is creating incredible business innovation opportunities across sectors, across industries. And so here we're gonna really start looking at the evolution of technological innovations that led to the creation of immense opportunities in FinTech specifically. So a great sort of application space for us to think about. And, and again, it's sort of an introductory module itself. So you're gonna think about the FinTech landscape and the factors driving its growth and how it can drive your growth within the firm as well. Let's go to the next slide. And as we go deeper into fintech, you're now going to look at the, dis the disruptive applications of fintech. So let's look at how fintech can be used in different ways, in different firms, in different industries to create products that really are transforming sectors. And really, obviously, with fintech itself, banking and financial sectors have been completely disrupted. But that disruption is happening across industry now, leveraging things like the blockchain and other tools that are changing how business can be done. And so here you're going to look at major trends, new opportunities to explore those trends themselves. So let's go to the next slide and the next module which as I previewed a bit is now looking at things like blockchain and cryptocurrency, something every business needs to be thinking about if you're not already. So you here, you're gonna look at distributed ledger, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and understand their applications in financial products and services themselves, but be able to then still have the conversations to connect that back to your industry, your firm, in whatever capacity or context you are in. 
Um, and in doing that, you're going to look at factors like competition, profitability, pricing, and so forth to really um, generate those effects, those exponential outcomes that fintech and related technologies can provide. Let's go to the next slide. And as we get to module 19, it's titled FinTech Entrepreneurship, and it is very much in that vein. So it's going to be looking at how do you drive a FinTech idea to execution using a business model canvas itself. And, and this is, you know, while looking specifically at FinTech, that idea to execution through the application of the business model canvas is a process that can be used with different technologies and different ideas. You're going to learn it through FinTech in this module itself. But part of this I want to say is, uh, while it says entrepreneurship, you should, in terms of your own context, be thinking about this also as potentially intrapreneurship. So you might not need the same sort of valuation, raising capital, but some of those same steps and processes of bringing something new into a firm will be relevant here in this module. Let's go to the next slide. And so here, right at the end of the program itself, Samir will come in one more time to work with you all around going from individual to structural models of leadership. Samir. Yeah, thank you, Richard. So the idea of this uh, last live session is to recognize that as much as you might work on your own leadership uh, skills and the repertoire that you have and the range that you can uh, deploy, uh, that technological change in the modern organization is an incredibly complex task and that individual leaders often can't do it alone. And so the idea of this uh, module is to think about what does an effective leadership system look like where the different leaders are complementing one another. So as you start to think about building your team, um, understanding what are your natural strengths, but then also what are some complementary uh, styles and skills that you can use to help you select other people to build the team around you. Um, but also in real time, if you're in a meeting at a very micro level, and you're noticing that some aspects of leadership are being manifested and others are not, how you can provide some corrections. Let me give you uh, just a concrete example. Uh, one of the uh, frameworks we talk about is the framework of power, meaning, and affect. So there are some organizations that are really focused on conversations related to power or getting things done. A lot of the conversations about what's our milestone, what's the deadline, who's doing what, and that's a super useful perspective, but the risk is maybe you're not driving towards the right outcome, the right aim. Other organizations are often in the domain of what I refer to as meaning or analysis and data. They're running numbers, they're, they're uh, uh, doing the machine learning predictive analytics, they're doing a lot of analysis, which is really great, trying to make sure they get to the right answer, but the risk is they could end up with analysis paralysis. Uh, and so that too at, at the extreme can be too much. And the third uh, domain we could think about is affect or uh, sort of the, the emotional and social side of things. Some organizations are actually really good and others less good at attending to things like burnout. Uh, you know, what's sustainable for this given organization? How are we gonna get from here to there in ways that people feel energized? Um, all of these three perspectives are really useful, but at the extremes, they can cause problems. So effective readers understand how in a, in a moment they can bridge across those domains, but they also think about building leadership systems where all three perspectives um, are co-equally represented. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, how to think about leadership as a system uh, in this last live session. Fantastic. Thank you, Samir. Let's go to the next slide. So here <clears throat> we come to the conclusion of the curriculum for the technology leadership program itself, and that's module 20, and it wraps everything up with the capstone itself. And so as it says in this final module, this is where you're gonna be creating and delivering that pitch deck for some kind of digital transformation proposal that offers a solution to hopefully a real problem that you have identified in your organization or an opportunity you want to pursue. And as part of this proposal, makes sense, you will also address the change management piece, the people part of it, the leadership part of it, and how you will, not just would, but will ensure a successful rollout itself. And here, I just want to pause for a moment to emphasize one thing before we talk about some other elements of the program, and that is this. We have run and delivered this program several times, and we have others that we've run in the past similar to it. And there is always a common thread 
of feedback from our executive participants when they've completed the program. And that is this. Everybody loves the technology strategy parts of it. And that's sort of what many tech individuals coming from a tech background are coming in to sort of deepen the knowledge, get more strategic around it and things like that. But without a doubt, every time, one of the most common pieces of is, I had no idea the leadership part is as important as it is. And it's that shift in mindset from uh, being purely technology focused and thinking that I have the right technology, the solution's there, I'm done and realizing that this is a, as much if not more a people leadership component than it is just having the right technology and technology strategy itself. And so I just wanna emphasize the coupling together of these topics being so critical and how so many people have gone through it and said, I had no idea that might've been the biggest key for me to unlock the opportunities to leverage this technology and move it forward to drive innovation and growth within my firm. So I just wanted to emphasize that and help draw that picture of how all these pieces are so intentionally put together. So let's go to the next slide. Just a couple more things to kind of speak to uh, before we wrap up the webinar itself. And, and you saw throughout the modules references to different cases and industry examples and things like that. So just wanted to have a slide here to show you just some of the examples of different cases, different anecdotes, different real stories you will engage with, whether you'll do it as a case analysis or whether you'll uh, do something else with these things, but you're gonna look at everything from Rolls-Royce Aerospace to Expedia to Rocket Fuel to Equinor to UPS. So different types of companies, different types of industries. And so you're really gonna get a sense of real examples and real sectors that will be hopefully in some way analogous and helpful for you and what you are doing yourself. Let's go to the next slide. So in addition to all of that, just some of the things to point out about the experience itself. We talked about the diverse faculty bringing a very cross-disciplinary approach to this program in particular. You just saw a slide where we referenced in particular the real world applications, both in terms of what you're gonna study and then the capstone, what you're gonna produce and do. This is about having a real tangible outcome. Looking at those case studies, Throughout the program, there will be some recordings with industry guest speakers letting their insights into aspects of these topics themselves. You're gonna do the capstone project and obviously the incredible feature of live interaction and sessions that we talk about with Professor Srivastava. Let's go to the next slide. What we haven't mentioned yet is that along this entire journey, you will have a industry expert learning facilitator that will be having live and asynchronous interactions with you along the way, helping you facilitate discussions, helping answer questions, helping facilitate the live sessions in some ways and prepare you for them. But you will have that individual and he will be there, he, he or she will be there to really facilitate your experience in a more high touch way across the entire six months. Um, and so we really want you to understand that as much of the program is asynchronous, you're still going to have opportunities for live interaction. You're still gonna have opportunities for discussion, to grow your network, to grow your community and to have an industry expert facilitator really holding your hand and walking you through the experience. Let's go to the next slide. So in summary, um, what to expect each week. Bite-sized learning components, a series of short videos to watch, an assignment or two, a discussion prompt or two. We really see the average time commitment is about four to six hours per week across the six months of the learning experience. Um, there will be assignments, quizzes, peer learning discussions, live teaching sessions like we've talked about, and frequent course communications with your learning facilitator that I just mentioned on the slide before. So really want you to have a clear picture of what to expect. So at this point, Marie, I will turn it back to you to uh, facilitate the close of the webinar. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you both for being here with us today uh, and, and taking us through the curriculum and what we can expect to learn uh, here in the program. It's been an absolute honor uh, learning more about this program from both of you, uh, Professor uh, Servastava and Richard. And there's, there's quite a bit of detail um, uh, that you might be wondering that is logistical or course policy related um, or related to the registration and enrollment process. Uh, so we want to let you know about the next steps, uh, which are to get connected with a program advisor. We want to make sure that that high level of relationship building and support uh, 
described by Richard and Professor Savastava, um, begins right here, right now with today's session and getting connected with the program academic advisor. So you can see the link here on your screen. Uh, we've also posted the link in the chat box that you can click on. Uh, so we invite you to open up that chat box. Uh, you'll find both a link as well as an email address there. Uh, both of those channels, you can get connected with the program academic advisor. Um, again, they're going to be able to help walk you through those logistical details, dates, times, scheduling for the program, course policy, what's the evaluative criteria, what happens if I'm late with an assignment, those kinds of questions. And then, of course, the registration and enrollment process, financing options, special group enrollment pricing, all of that, um, they are the experts. So certainly get connected there with an advisor um, on any of those types of questions. Um, so for our professors, is this program going to be a good fit for folks who don't have a lot of work experience? Samir, do you want to take that or would you like me to? Uh, why don't you go ahead and take it, Richard? Okay. Um, I, my answer would be this. I, I think it's about having a realistic expectation of what you can get out of the program itself. So I think obviously for somebody who's coming in with 10, 15 years of work experience, they're going to have all that experience to build on and really take it that much further. That's not to say someone without as much experience still can't benefit from this. These are relevant topics. They're very relevant for you, particularly if you're on the trajectory of becoming an entrepreneur and, you're, and that's where you're headed. These things make sense. I would just sort of say from a curriculum standpoint, have very realistic expectations of what you can get out of it and be very intentional about that. In other words, if you're coming in with not as much experience, really also listening to the peers and learning from their experience can be incredibly helpful as well. Um, but if you know what you're getting and you know what you need, that's that's what it's all about. Certainly, uh, this is not a, a static program where you're simply digesting content. It's reciprocal. So you come in with your questions, you come in with your contributions, and you learn as well from your peers and your teaching team, and of course, your faculty here as well. Uh, so we've reached the top of the hour. I'd love a final uh, words of wisdom, comments, advice um, from both of our keynote speakers. Um, uh, maybe Richard, we'll start with you, and then we'll we'll have closing remarks um, from Professor Sarvastava. Sure. I, I think my closing remark would simply be this. Um, know what you want at the end of the day. Be open to the possibilities. And if this program aligns with your interests and your needs and where you see you want to take your career, come in with that intention and make the most of every aspect and component and learning opportunity that you will have. It's an incredible, rich experience. So, Samir. Yeah, the last thing I'd say is that what I think is really unique about this program is that it both exposes you to uh, the latest technologies and tools, so it keeps you uh, on the frontier as it relates to the external world, but at the same time really helps you think about your internal uh, wiring as a leader, right, and integrating your the internal parts of you as a leader with the external parts, that is what I think is really distinctive about this program, and I hope you uh, decide to join it. Uh, thank you both again for being here with us, for sharing your knowledge, your insights, your expertise. And to all of you who've joined in from around the globe to be here, thank you as well. Uh, for now, we sign off with a heartfelt good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to all of you from around the globe. We hope to see you back in the program. Bye-bye.